All right, for more insight, Professor Song Se-ryeon of Kyung University and our reporter Kim Hae-sung join us in the studio today. So good to see you guys again. Good to be here. All right, so let's start with uh, the two leaders heading to Pektusa Mountain earlier today. This was a rather sudden, unexpected hiking trip uh, by the two. So what can we make of this? Well, the fact that they're going on a hiking trip that says, says to uh, the, the self-congratulation a little bit. We have uh, this much achieved, so we're going to go take a rest and do a little bit of sightseeing. This mm -hmm. is something that uh, President Moon Jae-in wanted to do all along. So, and also very symbolic. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a, a, is a very mythic and mystic mountain, uh, very uh, with full of uh, meanings to uh, Koreans, uh, because this is the mountain where the, the, the son of the god came mm -hmm. down to right. start the, the people group in this peninsula. So in that sense, probably uh, uh, intended to be a, a kind of a, a last minute period uh, to a uh, whole process of a uh, long journey of the summit in, in this process. And so it could probably symbolize also that the two leaders uh, perhaps think this was a successful summit between the two because some are saying that depending on the outcome of the summit, the two might not have a quote unquote a friendship event right. a, a day afterwards. But we're, we're seeing that this happening, perhaps this was the friendship event that the two were going to have if the summit turned out to be successful, right? So mm -hmm. All smiles all around. Right. That's how, did you make anything of this uh, Factor Sound Mountain mm -hmm. trip? I have to agree, leaders. it does hold a symbolic meaning because Pektusan Mountain, it's, it is the sacred mountain, but at the same time for Koreans, it means a lot because it's in the Korean national anthem. And um, it's the first time that the leaders of the two Koreas are heading together mm. to Pektusan Mountain. It's the first time since the Korean War. Right. So it does send a message that um, the two Koreas are ushering a new era of peace mm. and to really end the history of division and war, as President Moon said yesterday. All right, so let's turn our attention back to that joint declaration announced yesterday. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot came out of it, but what are some of the things that stood out for you? Well, you remember that when we went in, uh, the, the, what we were facing was a stalled talk between the North Korea and the U.S. Mike Pompeo's trip was canceled. And so uh, President Moon's role as a mediator uh, was a very urgent one. Mm -hmm. And they had a three-stated purpose agenda and one big hidden agenda, uh, well, but not so hidden. And those were uh, strengthening Korean ties, uh, and as we can see, the optics will attest uh, it was a pretty a feel-good uh, event, mm -hmm. so no problem there. Alleviation of military threats, especially along the borders, uh, with uh, pretty, pretty much hard work put into a negotiation, resulted in a pretty elaborate uh, military-related agreement. So we'll check off there. The biggest one, the, the denuclearization. I mean, everybody was expecting that has to happen in a very substantial and very uh, specified way so that it will get to the, the hidden agenda, which is to, re to resume the talk between the North Korea and the, the U.S., Donald Trump. So th that was a big ticket item. But yesterday, the, the immediate re uh, reaction to what has been agreed and the languages of it was pretty disappointing because mm -hmm. there was no uh, specific mention of the actions. Right, and but the timeline then, as well, right? So right. That, that was soon uh, uh, turned the tide when Donald Trump tweeted that he was very excited. Mm -hmm. And then there were a, a flurry of immediate actions, Mike Pompeo, uh, arranged to meet Lee Yong Ho in New York. There was a Vienna meeting that is being arranged. So it seems like uh, it's all uh, but certain that the uh, the U.S. meeting will take mm. place. So in that sense, okay, then yeah. there's a uh, successful meeting. I, I have to say that this is kind of dramatic in a way that there has been a process of negotiation and posturing on both sides mm. in a very dramatic way. There was even a catfight sometimes, a fire and fury, and, right. and school children <laughs> kind of childish <laughs> yes. uh, scur scurrings. Uh, but then the posturing of making a, a necessary element in place, especially for uh, 
uh, North Korea to bring in China mm. uh, to be, uh, if needed, uh, a white knight of some sort that was in place. And also the necessary or frequent threat of a uh, walk away or pull out mm. that has been used in both parties and, and a couple of times. So uh, with all those dramatic uh, turns and ups and downs with the role of uh, President Moon, uh, mediator, it's kind of amazing or kind of uh, gratifying that mm -hmm. we're at a place where we're looking forward to the next step. Mm -hmm. And instead of talking about you know, the, the threat of war, now we're talking about what kind of peace process we can accomplish. Mm -hmm. so it, we're not there, but at least that prospect is pretty, pretty stark from mm -hmm the depressing prospect we had about a year ago. Right. Now, but the premier pledge on denuclearization uh, from yesterday contained a big uh, precondition from North Korean leader Kim Jong-un saying that he permanently dismantled his nuclear complex, main nuclear complex, only if the U.S. The US takes unspecified uh, counter or corresponding measures. So what can we make of that? Well, of course, the corresponding measure, a lot of experts think that it's about the end of the uh, war declaration. Signing a peace treaty. Right, mm -hmm. signing a peace treaty. U.S. has been that, no, you denuke first, then comes the treaty. And then North Korea is, well, give us uh, that one first so that we can pro begin the process of denuclearization. Mm. Uh, I, I think what we have is kind of a middle point where President Moon has uh, suggested that if there is a a sufficiently concrete commitment towards that direction to go down the path of the denuclearization, mm -hmm. then maybe in exchange, the peace treaty could be committed. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that's what we have here uh, in Washington, probably. They'll talk more about the specified action-oriented items, and if it's acceptable to the U.S., probably they'll uh, commit to uh, peace treaty in a very specified schedule. Mm. So, Hezon, do you think uh, this will be enough for U.S. President Donald Trump to pick up from where President Moon Jae-in has left off? I mean, he has played his mediator role during this summit, and uh, U.S. President Trump, uh, Donald Trump, obviously had very positive reaction to this week's summit uh, well, on his tweets and during his interview. So, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. So Professor Song just said um, the hidden goal is to revive the talks. It is hidden, but it's actually the main goal for President Moon to revive mm -hmm. the stall talks between <laughs> Washington and Pyongyang. And before um, the summit, so before the summit started in, on Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, the White House didn't um, provide any statement. It's just the U.S. State Department saying uh, we welcome the talks and we'll see how it goes, but mm -hmm. the sanctions will remain in place. Remember that... Uh, while the uh, negotiations or summit talks between President Moon Jae-in and North Korean leader went on, U.S. Security Council held this urgent meeting to discuss sanctions on North Korea. So there were some pessimism or concerns that um, the stall talks between North Korea and U.S. will not take place. But right after the summit yesterday, so Wednesday, Korea time, Mike Pompeo said in the statement, let me quote, on the basis of these important commitments, the U.S. is prepared to engage immediately in negotiations to transform U.S. DPR, case okay, so North Korea relations. So that is a positive response from the U.S. So we can, we can say it's a... Um, we can see some optimistic mm -hmm. changes or upcoming events. Right. I mean, it's as if they kind of waited for this, right? <laughs> Their quick response. Right on cue. Yeah. On cue. <laughs> so do you think it, uh, we'll be seeing a second uh, Kim Trump summit within this year? I think so. Okay. Uh, I think they're uh, deeply committed to, to prepare for that. And I, I think it's uh, over certain because I think both parties really want this. Uh, of course, uh, Kim Jong-un has been gearing for this opportunity, yeah. but Donald Trump, with the prospect of the midterm election and his waning uh, approval rating, he really wants some big victory and the, the, the peacekeeper for the world peace. I, I think that's the big prize he's gunning for. Mm.
Mm. Now, we also had that military agreement signed by the two sides yesterday along with the joint declaration. So how would this agreement help to further carry out the Panmunjom declaration signed back in April? I know that this is going to eventually help uh, to rid the peninsula of any military threats between the two Koreas, but this is actually a road towards uh, less war fears on the peninsula and normalize the ties between the two Koreas, I believe. Uh, very much so. Mm -hmm. The regional skirmishes has been a fact of life for Koreans, but they always had a threat that this small skirmishes could elevate or escalate to a, a more uh, unfortunate war situation. Mm -hmm. So taking care of those issues and the border uh, issues, especially demilitarized zone and the Western Sea situation and also uh, Panmunjom area disarmament, uh, those things uh, could contribute a lot to uh, significantly al uh, alleviate mm. the threat of those uh, regional skirmishes happening. All right. I think that uh, this is a... a not only the implementation of what we agreed before, mm -hmm. but the big meaning, I think, is getting to the details finally. Right. Uh, not just the declaration, not just the agreement, but getting down to nitty-gritty details. Mm -hmm. Multi-page agreement, uh, which will be closely uh, scrutinized by uh, all the, the related parties, including the U.S. So this is a, a very positive in that it uh, addresses the mm. details. And the devil is in the details indeed. Now, what's interesting is that behind the scenes of this week's summit was the mysterious Kim Yo-jung, Kim Jong-un's <laughs> sister. And she was caught on camera many times running around and trying to make sure that things ran smoothly right beside her brother Kim Jong-un. So uh, could this be an actual uh, debut for her? I mean, we've seen her before, but we this time it actually showed that she was a very uh, a loyal confidant to her brother and also a very top official in the North Korean regime has showed. Uh, we can't avoid that conclusion. She is a family member, a uh, very highly statured uh, uh, woman, and uh, we saw that she is not just a sister, but she can smooth things out mm. and she's a go-to person if something's to be uh, smooth over or talk about. So in terms of communications, probably uh, it's a good thing to have a somebody who is very trusted and reliable. Mm. Now, uh, what's the remaining schedule for today for the two leaders and President Moon as he before he heads back home? So the remaining schedule for now, it's not 100% um, confirmed mm -hmm. by the Blue House, as I checked with the Blue House correspondent. But so far, what we have is President Moon Jae-in will have lunch at um, uh, Mount Baekdoza Mountain. Okay. And then he'll uh, take the plane from Samjiang um, uh, airport, airport and mm -hmm. then return to Seoul. So the plan is to return to Seoul by around 6 p.m. today. Okay. Now, when can we expect Mr. Kim to visit Seoul, you think? Well, I think it has to be, well, I, I think it was said that it's going to be this year, within this year. So would that be before or after Washington trip? I would tend to think they would be after mm. uh, because it would be too much of a busy schedule to uh, do a high profile one uh, before. Uh, the U.S. trip. Right. And U.S. trip is uh, pretty constrained in terms of schedule because uh, Donald Trump wants to, it to happen mm -hmm. before the midterm election. Midterm election is in November, right. so it should be sometime in October, which is next month. Mm. So I think that uh, uh, the Seoul trip will be kind of a uh, aftermath of whatever accomplishments that they've uh, chalked up at that point. Well, considering we only have like three months left to the year 2018, it seems right. like we have a lot of important summits left on our calendar. But um, you talked about China before, but I mean, uh, we had some reaction from China. Uh, do we have any more details on that? I, I think that uh, China... <coughs> You know, back a couple of months ago, I, I think we were even talking about is China relevant in this process, China passing and all those. Mm -hmm. But then uh, uh, we soon realized that North needs China to be there to be a safeguard. And China wants to be involved very much uh, because of the regional importance that China has inherently. Uh, at this point, uh, just as North Korea and South Korea 
uh, is in South Korea especially is in, in close contact with an, with the U.S. Mm -hmm. North Korea probably is in close contact with uh, China. Right. Especially if you're talking about the uh, military options and uh, probably the word that will at some point resurface again right. and uh, the stance that China has was they were always uh, has been against the insulation of that and the implications that it has in mm -hmm. the Korean Peninsula and China. Uh, it, a lot of people worry that that is also uh, still there, mm -hmm. saying that if Korean Peninsula is toward, uh, heading down towards a peace, then what's the need of that? Mm -hmm. uh, it should be removed. And uh, although Kim Jong-un uh, already said that uh, the U.S. troops in Korea is a separate matter mm -hmm. uh, with, the, with the peace process they're pursuing, that could surface again, uh, depending on what China wants. Mm. So uh, I think that everybody has kind of one eye towards what China wants, especially when China is having a, a trade dispute in right. a major scale with the U.S. So that kind of bad blood might s spill over towards the security side. Mm. So uh, it's not a comfortable situation. Hmm. Now, going back to the nuclear or the uh, joint declaration between the two Koreas, uh, would we see some immediate action from North Korea in terms of dismantling its uh, nuclear facilities and all? Uh, I think that they have to uh, uh, put things in motion at least, uh, especially on the Dongchangli uh, right. side, because I think everybody was saying that, well, they did enough talk, which has been reneged or, you know, uh, uh, turned out to be a lie. Right. So this is a time to walk the talk. Right? And um, because th th Donald Trump wants some specific actions before the midterm election, I think that uh, the, there was demand and North Korea is prepared to show a, a gesture. If they want to blow up some uh, facilities soon, probably it'll come uh, sooner than later, mm -hmm. uh, so that the, the momentum of this peace process and talks will continue uh, until uh, the Donald Trump uh, kind of puts down this big package for <laughs> <laughs> the North Korea. Uh, that's going to be the, the ultimate point of the long road of negotiation. Right, and uh, there are also talks of reviving uh, the Gyeongsang Industrial Complex as well as reviving tourism mm -hmm. on Mount Kumgang. But of course, there are still sanctions in place, like uh, Hesong mentioned, maximum pressure on North Korea until it denuclearizes. So, where do we see that going? Well, the, it, it's a little bit confusing because when we stopped the the Gyeongsang Complex or closed down. That was not explicitly because of the UN sanctions. Mm. It was a Korean government's uh, the, the sanction items. But of course, after that, uh, there were a series of sanctions were in place, including US's and U UN's. Right. So at this point, I think the latest uh, position is that, well, uh, we cannot start it over or we cannot resume it because of the other sanctions that mm. is in place ever since. But uh, the, the UN sanctions and US sanctions always had exceptions, like the infrastructure uh, projects, right. projects and agriculture and all those. If it's not related to the, the, the nuclear development or the financial uh, or economic uh, uh, arrangements, then you, we can always look for it. Mm. So I think one of the items that they can talk about or will talk about in, in the US might be that, well, the Kumgang project and the Kaesong uh, industrial complex could be an exception, mm. could be uh, carved out uh, as a sign of a good uh, goodwill and okay. show. And remember that uh, even during this uh, summit, there was a big uh, business convention in, in, in Pyongyang right. uh, bringing in a lot of uh, merchants from uh, China and Russia. Mm. So similar arrangements could be made uh, in exchange for some uh, showing of and gestures of goodwill 
from mm. North Korea. This is, this is definitely North Korean leader Kim Jong Un stepping up efforts to normalize his nation. I guess be, he wants to be seen as a normal nation, and and in a, in a, within the international community, you know, other than just a nuclear power, a threat to the world security, right? So, right. We saw sense. a lot of that, including mm. his wife is stepping up in a major way to uh, to be shown as a, a first lady right. doing the usual things. Right, we haven't seen that happen things. before in right. North Korea, so in that sense. Now, we've seen a, a lot of exchanges between the two Koreas, even before this week's summit, in regards to uh, exchanges of uh, forestry and, like you said, infrastructure. And we've also seen uh, family reunions happen, right? Uh, mm -hmm. With uh, So the two Koreas are s tackling some humanitarian issues as well. So, like you said, uh, perhaps uh, the Kaesong Industrial Complex and the Mam uh, uh, to tourism re could restart uh, if the U.S. Uh, kind of gives that exception, but we never know, right? Right. I, I think North Korea really wants uh, those things to start. All right. Well, Hazel, anything that stood out uh, for this week's summit for you before we wrap it up? Um, uh, I'm, I mean, the scenes, uh, like the first summit, it's like from the first summit in Panmun, Panmunjom leading up to the second summit in May, in May mm -hmm. and then to the, no, the third summit this time in Pyongyang. They're all historic summits, and I'm just glad that um, there are more substantive, concrete um, uh, pledges to denuclearization, and I hope that could be put into action and we can really see a new era of peace on the Korean Peninsula. All right, let's definitely hope for that. Thank you so much for coming in today, guys. Thank you. Thank you.